The United States is quickly running out of gas because one of the country's largest pipelines is basically shut down and the federal government is trying to figure out what to do about this kind of an important thing that we all rely on on a day to day basis. Gasoline, whether you've got a Tesla or an EV or whatever, you still use gasoline because other people use it in order to bring you your food to your grocery store and to your restaurants. And the list goes on and on. So when transportation comes screeching to a halt, Everything comes screeching to a halt and everybody is sort of bracing for impact. Now, the good news here is that the, the company that is behind running this pipeline, they're saying that they're expecting to have some improvements or some ability to restart the transportation of the fuel by the end of the week. We'll see whether or not they hit that target. So what I want to do is show you sort of what the country is doing, what we are doing as a nation to respond to this. Obviously, this is a big problem. I don't necessarily see this as a Democrat versus a Republican type of an issue. This is the entire country, okay? We're Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, liberal, uh, BLM, and police officers. They all live on the East Coast, and so they're all being impacted by this at the hands of some foreign entity, some foreign organization called Dark Side that is now holding half of our country hostage under this ransomware. So we want to break this down. We want to make sure that the you know the full the full force of the federal government is uh rectifying this problem this is kind of what they are uh, created to do is to solve these types of crises so hopefully they're springing into action so that everybody else can return back to some normalcy so the first story i want to go through is from the wall street journal they give us a little bit of a, of a better breakdown yesterday when we covered this story it was new there was a lot of information that really hadn't been sifted through so the wall street journal has now assembled it all and so they give us a nice synopsis so let's dig into this article it says here u.s blames a criminal group in the colonial pipeline hack. And we knew some, some of this yesterday. Darkside is a ransomware organization that is believed to be based in Eastern Europe, says it has no connection to foreign governments, which is, you know, who knows whether or not you believe that, right? They're all going to claim that and all the governments are going to disavow them anyways. A criminal gang believed to be based in Eastern Europe was involved in the hack that led to the shutdown of the main pipeline supplying gasoline and diesel fuel onto the East Coast. Biden and others decried the ransomware attack that was used as a growing global problem. The organization is known as Darkside, relatively new hacking group. Western security researchers say is likely based out of Eastern Europe, possibly in Russia. The organization created the malicious computer code that resulted in the shutdown. The FBI confirms that the dark side ransomware is responsible for the compromise of the colonial pipeline network, said an FBI spokesman on Monday. Quote, we continue to work with the company and our government partners on the investigation. And so, you know, I'm not real familiar with how you know, sort of the, the governmental intricacies of running pipelines are, but you're going to imagine that there are many, many layers of bureaucracy that they're going to be having to work through. And it's across a massive scale. I mean, we went through the length of the pipeline. We've got a slide on it today just showing you how long the pipeline is. I mean, it goes all the way down from basically uh, the Gulf of Mexico up into, I think, New Jersey, that entire span of the East Coast, even into the Gulf area. So a lot is going on. You've got multiple state governments. You've got multiple federal agencies. Agencies. It's it's a big project and they're trying to ramp this thing back up by the end of the week. And a lot of people are relying on that. So the hack of the pipeline disclosed over the weekend has prompted intense concern among senior U.S. officials within the Biden administration, many of whom have already viewed ransomware as a digital blight capable of jeopardizing national and economic security. Ransomware is a practice hackers use to lock up computer systems and demand payment from victims for their release. So Biden and the Russian government didn't appear to have a hand in this, or so it said Biden. Annie Newberger, deputy national security advisor for the cyber and emerging technology, said during a separate White House press briefing that officials believe that Darkside was a criminal group confirmed that the colonial shut down its networks before the ransomware infected any of its operational systems. Asked if there were possible ties to the Russian government and other groups, Ms. Newberger said, our intelligence agencies are looking for any ties to nation state actors. In Russia, China, and elsewhere, the line between criminal hacking groups and state-backed cyber operations is often murky. Security experts say as governments often tolerate criminal activity as long as it targeted overseas and sometimes recruit hackers from those groups to carry out their own objectives. Right? And we've seen a lot of this sort of the, the idea that you know, China and Russia and even some of these, you know, uh, the North Koreans and some of these other smaller countries, rather than investing in traditional warfare or traditional defense strategies, things like, you know, buying tanks and weapons and firearms and missile missiles and you know, building a space program. It's very expensive. What if you just set up a, a, you know, a couple warehouses with the best computers and some of the smartest people in the world in their, you know, working night and day, writing code and you know, sort of trying to breach different uh, cybersecurity systems throughout the country so, or throughout the world? 
kind of seems like one is more obtainable than the other. And, you know, we're seeing more and more of this. And, uh, you know, w w when uh, solar, when solar winds happen on this channel, I was like, this is, this is wild stuff. And what concerns me more than anything about these stories is that they all just kind of go away. You know, they all just kind of come up and then just go away. Solar winds. Wow. This was like a national thing. Everybody was hitting the panic button. You had federal agencies across the entire country going, whoa, right? This is a big, big deal. They've compromised a lot. Then off the story it's just gone. It's like gone a, a week later. Nobody even talks about it. Was, did they, did they patch that? Did they root that out? Did somebody update the virus software over there at Microsoft? I mean, is this, is this going to be an ongoing problem? Because it is, we have another one where another one of our critical infrastructure, you know, uh, segments of our entire economy are falling, are falling prey to a group of hackers that nobody knows where they are. Nobody knows where they came from. Dark side. All right. Over in uh, Eastern Europe, maybe Russia. Great. So, you know, the question is, what are we doing with our government if we've got all of these, you know, alphabet agencies that invest billions and trillions of dollars over the course of my lifetime into providing national security? What, why do our cyber systems seem to be so vulnerable where they're knocking out the, the fuel grid for half the country? Okay, this wasn't somebody's uh, Facebook profile got hacked. No, oh, I can't post anymore, mom. What should I do? This is a big deal. And it just happened, you know, not too long ago. And so I think this is more of a, if you want to call it this, a systemic failure from the government. We are dropping the ball all over the place on these types of uh, uh, infractions from uncertain actors from around the world. And, um, you know, apparently... There's only one system in this country that is immune from this. There's only one system, and it's, of course, the election system. Everything else falls pretty easily. Earlier on Monday, DarkSide posted a statement on the dark web claiming that its goal was solely to make money, denied that it was connected to a foreign government. DarkSide's statement didn't directly mention the pipeline, whose 5,500-mile pipeline from the Gulf Coast to Linden, New Jersey, has been offline for four days following a ransomware attack. We are apolitical. We do not participate in geopolitics, they said. Our goal is to make money not creating problems for society. So they're good capitalists, just like, you know, anybody else. The group that posted the statement didn't respond to a request for comment, which is unfortunate. The statement didn't say how much money was being demanded. U.S. officials, cybersecurity investigators involved in responding to the hack have viewed DarkSide as the leading suspect in the attack since its discovery last week, according to people familiar with the matter. They've come to that determination in part due to commonalities in the malicious code used in the attack that it linked to previous attacks carried out by the group. FBI on Friday sent out an internal all points bulletin asking for any information about the dark side group according to two people familiar with the matter fbi didn't immediately respond for uh, to comment either so uh okay so that's great good news nobody really knows what's going on with this dark side group and not real sure what the update is we've got gas stations meanwhile are running dry we are seeing this all over the east coast they're beginning to run out of fuel as the biggest petroleum attack keeps fuel shut down for days from Virginia to Florida to Alabama stations are reporting they've sold out of gasoline supplies estimated 7% of gas stations were out as of late on Monday and we talked about this yesterday remember I said yesterday uh, I was telling you the story in Arizona one of our pipelines went out I think when I was in high school and it was a big problem. I mean, the whole the whole state freaked out about this and for a long time. And it was a weird situation because any time that somebody saw a gas truck, I mean, one of the big, you know, semi trucks that have the big cylinder hauling the gasoline down the road, people would follow the trucks. Oh, where's that going? I'm going to follow that over to Circle K or to 7-Eleven or to QT or whatever. And they would just, you know, follow these trucks around waiting for gasoline. It was like something out of Mad Max or one of these bizarre movies. And so I'm really hopeful that this doesn't happen over there because it was a weird situation. And what happens, I think, psychologically is this whole thing is just toilet paper version 2.0. It's the same thing. When you're driving home and you see that there's a bunch of cars lined up at a gas station, you go, uh-oh, they're getting gas. I probably should get gas. Maybe I'll stop and fill up my tank. And so everybody does that. And then now, rather than people driving around on semi-filled gas tanks, somebody's driving around in a quarter tank, that guy's on a full tank, he just filled up, but he, she's on a half tank, quarter tank, third of a tank. Everybody's now full all the time. They all, they gotta be full. As soon as they drop down a quarter tank, they go, oh, gas, gotta get it. As soon as they see it. So now supply can't catch up because the demand is too heavy. And so we, we saw we saw this in Arizona and it was kind of a crazy thing. So it, I, I, I'm hopeful that it doesn't get to that point, but it's looking like maybe it will. And we're going to see where this goes. We have uh, an image here that was posted over from Atlanta. 
Gas stations in Atlanta were suffering for, from shortages on Monday as a result of the hack. Says out of all gas besides diesel due to a gas shortage. See another one over here uh, from Olivia Iverson over on Twitter. This and she posted this yesterday, right? Out of gas, I watched car after car drive through the Circle K on Massachusetts and Mobile Highway only to find that they're out of regular gas, only diesel. Tonight at 4 and 5, we're looking into the area-wide outage that's behind it. And she posted this yesterday. Okay, This is when it was just heating up. Extremely high demand for those who have gas today. I counted around 30 cars in line at the station outside the Walmart on Mobile. Only a handful of pumps that aren't taped off. So everybody's just out. taking a look at the gas all right so the colonial pipeline we can see has been shut down since late friday on monday fbi pointed the finger at dark side while joe biden stopped short of blaming the kremlin said there is evidence that the hackers or the software they used are in russia uh, Chief Executive Officer from Colonial, Joe Blount, and a top lieutenant assured Deputy Energy Secretary David Turk and state-level officials the company has complete operational control of the pipeline and won't restart shipments until the ransomware has been neutralized. So it sounds like maybe they've actually sort of, uh, you know, opened up sort of a, a backup system to, to maintain control of the pipeline, but their their operational systems are... The, the software is not capable of, of controlling or operating the pipeline. They maintain control of it, but it's not operational because they've severed it from uh, normal functioning. So I'm not I'm, I'm botching this. Let's go back to the article. All right, moving on. The dwindling supplies come just as the nation's energy industry was preparing to meet stronger fuel demand from summer, tra summer travel. Americans are once again commuting to the office and booking flights. East Coast is losing around 1.2 million barrels a day of gasoline supply. So the Green New Deal people must be happy about this. The Asheville, North Carolina uh, clerk at an Exxon station says, I'm currently out of gas. Sign offering unleaded gasoline for $269, otherwise out of service. So we've got some more shortages. Gasoline prices initially surged 4.2%. All right, Darkside, Darkside said in a post on the dark web that it wasn't to blame Ransomware cases involving hacker CD. Okay, let's see this. They hinted that an affiliate group may have been behind the attack. The group promised to do a better job of screening customers that buy its malware. So we've got Darkside is uh, being very ethical now. They're saying next time we do this, we're going to screen the people who want to implement our, uh, our attacks. Government officials have not advised Colonial on whether it ought to pay the ransom. Deputy National Security Advisor for Cyber and Emerging Technologies, Annie Newberger, said during a briefing. So they're actually talking about, oh, just pay it. Yeah, I mean, just pay it. It's not that, you know, how much is it? What are they asking for? Do we know? Do we know how much they want? How much is it? Because gas is going to be pretty expensive soon, you know, and you're going to have to weigh it. What's the cost of just paying it? We have, it's all hands on deck, says the U.S. Secretary, Gina Romando. We're working closely with the company and everybody else. White House pulled together an interagency task force to address the breach, including exploring options for lessening its impact. According to an official, Biden can invoke an array of emergency powers, some rules, curbing domestic transportation have been let up to help deal with any shortages the northeast can secure gasoline shipments from europe but it will come at an increasing cost the longer the pipeline stays shut in the meantime fuel producers including marathon are weighing alternatives for how to ship their project pro product all right so the problems just continue to compound once again here is the pipeline and you can see how far along this goes and the image that we just got was from atlanta so even right about here Right, we're we're already losing gasoline. The Daily Mail is saying who else is being held to ransom. So now there's some ideas that maybe this is going to extend into other industries or into other uh, uh, companies, right? Into other segments of our country, whether it's national infrastructure or whether it's just private business. I remember seeing a story, I think back during the COVID era where there was some hacking group that got control, I think of a hospital somewhere or one of the uh, internal infrastructure, uh, you know, power grids or something within a hospital, and they were ransomwareing the, the software. And uh, right, that's a big problem. All right, people are dropping dead because of your ransomware. That's a little bit different than locking somebody out of their Instagram account or something. Big deal. Daily Mail now is asking who else is involved in this. They launched cyber attacks more than 24 other companies after they shut down the pipeline. At least two dozen other unnamed companies were also affected. 
that were also helped by other companies and U.S. agencies. So gas stations from Florida, officials have warned the attack, sh warned the attack shows how vulnerable the U.S. is to cyber attacks, which is yep, something we've been screaming about. Biden said on Monday, we need to invest and safeguard our critical infrastructure. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm said the attack tells you how utterly vulnerable we are to cyber attacks. OK, so uh, all right. Are we going to do anything about it or not? Com Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo warned that such attacks are here to stay. Darkside posted an apology on the dark web and said they did not want social consequences, nor do they want political influence. So that's nice of them. Here is a cybersecurity expert who's sort of explaining how this works because I just botched it earlier. Here he is. With this group, though, who's, who's told to be called the dark side group, it's a, a ransomware group, they're a criminal network. Normally, what we've seen them do is compromise edge devices to get into these networks. So think firewalls or your ability to access the networks. Those types of appliances are getting uh, exploited directly, which leads them to getting into those environments. And then the adversary's team, the humans, go through and spread throughout that network, figure out what's most important to the victim, steal it, and then start locking up systems. As it relates to the networks being brought down, what we understand at this point is that Colonial did that proactively. They took down their operations networks to make sure that nothing spread into those systems, thus hopefully making a temporary outage versus something that would be more sustained. Mm. But as these industries transform, we're seeing a lot of digital transformation across every industrial company in the world. As those things transform, realize you're exposing yourself to new vulnerability. You're exposing yourself to new access for these adversaries. And these, these groups are realizing that by targeting industrial companies, they can get higher payouts and the companies are more willing to pay out because they want to return these vital operations. Infrastructure communities do historically lag other uh, industries in terms of their spending on cybersecurity. The US is not lagging other parts of the world, but we're getting hit a lot more and we're a more digital society. So we have more availability for those threats. However, the first thing that people want to do is blame the infrastructure companies. Why aren't you spending more? Why aren't you doing more? In reality, they're listening to the standards and regulations and best practices and frameworks out there, which prioritize more than 75% of every one of those standards prioritizes that preventative focus. And so without understanding what's in your environment, without monitoring it, without getting to the detection and response, that prevention atrophies over time and it changes over time and it lessens in values. Yeah, solid. So you know what that reminded me of? If you are uh, somebody who's about my age, 35, I, I remember when I was growing up, there was this sort of uh, platform battle, right, between Microsoft Windows and Apple when I was younger. And uh, you know, sort of Windows was always the superior operating system. It was always bigger, let's say, not superior, just triggered everybody in the comments. But it, it, it's always the, sort of been the bigger operating system. It's, been, you know, it's Goliath versus David. Uh, and it was something where there was always a debate where the people who are a part of the Apple ecosystem would say, well, we don't get any viruses, right? Our system is secure. We don't have any viruses over on Windows, Windows 95, Windows 2000, Windows 98. You know, you always have to install virus software. And it was a big problem back in that era because it was always a virus. Oh, something was always crashing, you know, the blue screen of death. And it was a big issue. And so there was always McAfee and Norton. And then we had Kaspersky and all of these different virus softwares, Nod. And, and the list goes on and on. I played around with a lot of them because I was a geek like that. You know, I wanted the most secure system when I was a kid. So what we did is, you know, we're always securing our systems. And the criticism from the Apple people, well, your system is always insecure because you have so many holes in it because you're on all of these different devices. And the response from the Windows people to the Apple people was always, well, people actually use our, our stuff. They actually are on Windows. That's why people are writing viruses for Windows. Nobody wants to write viruses for your, you know, iPhone. Be well, there wasn't an iPhone back then. I know. I know. Miss Faith is back there, you know, jumping out of her seats because I'm ripping on Apple. But the point here is th there was nobody operating on that ecosystem back in the 90s. There's a lot of people on iPhone now, all right? So don't beat me up over it. But they are... You know, in that early era, nobody was writing software for them. So, you know, maybe the United States infrastructure, as this gentleman is saying, is not that it's necessarily bad. It's just that the United States is the biggest. And so everybody wants to attack our infrastructure. And so you got to respond proportionally. So now that I just alienated half the audience on the Mac versus uh, PC debate, let's move on. We have the 
uh, we have a gas shortage hashtag was trending on Twitter today over from Elizabeth Shearwood uh, Randall. She's the Homeland Security Advisor, and she said, this was uh, earlier today, said that there is not a supply shortage of gas following a ransomware attack on Colonial Pipelines, which disrupted the flow of nearly half the gasoline and jet fuel supplies to the East Coast. So this was trending today, which was kind of hilarious, you know, and this is something that uh, I saw sort of a theme of this on Twitter today. Here was the New York Times also saying uh, that there have been no long lines or major price hikes. Okay, and this wasn't yesterday. This was today. This was this morning, 625 a.m. We just showed you pictures yesterday saying there's no gas anywhere. And uh, New York Times this morning says, no, 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 hold on. Since the shutdown, there have been no long lines or major price hikes for gasoline. Here's what to know. So they post the article, you know, I mean, basically trying to, you know, massage, do damage control for the whole thing. Don't freak out. Meanwhile, everybody's freaking out. Here's what's happening. Gas station in Robinville, all out of gas. Clerk manager said it was uh, five days before they have gas again. Says phones have been ringing off the hook. People calling around to find gas. And this was posted yesterday. This is the gas station across the street. Long line again. Very reminiscent of what we saw here in Arizona. Gas lines, 93 octane only. Gas shortage. This is, looks like it's out of North Carolina and Asheville. I'm in Asheville and lines are already here. Some of the pumps, it looks like they're out of anything but 93 octane and some have bags over them so the uh run on gas is happening live here yeah and so he posted that this morning here's another one from qt this is crazy i stopped for gas just now having no idea what was happening it's out people here told me they'd been to other stations and they found the same thing so it's the qt gas station on selenese around 9 30 at night they are out of gas Everybody sitting here is not getting gas. Everything except diesel is out, what they just told me. Yeah, so the New York Times was a little bit off on that. And we have here, uh, we can see this. It says, weird, I saw at least 20 cars lined up at the only gas station open in Asheville last night. Uh, and so they're all sort of retweeting this. Um, uh, gaslighting from the New York Times. We have Amy Curtis says, don't pull a muscle carrying all that water for Biden. This is not the truth. If you talk to almost anyone in North Carolina, it's crazy. I'm not sure why this story isn't a big deal in the media, but it's weird. And yeah, the the question is, why do they do this? Why are, you know, why is the media doing this? 